A lot of people don't know this, but Spencer Haywood, like in Winning Time, they said that Magic was the first to be offered the contract. It was actually Spencer Haywood. Spencer Haywood was offered the very first signature shoe with Nike. And I think the story goes that they didn't have enough money to be able to pay you, so they wanted to pay you in stock. And in today's stock, it would have been equivalent to... 2.1 billion. And the agent, and if I can quote your agent, said, I can't get paid in stock, so we're going to take the money. we are going to take the money. And that was what you did because... Well, he didn't understand only, stock, he does, he and he wasn't financially savvy to understand the to difference. Understand it. it was this is 1973, so when and I, the, the joke was that shoe is never going to make it. And that's a shoe for a runner. People not right. equating that the <laughs> one of the things you do shoe. in basketball, you're gonna fucking run, bro. Yeah. You're gonna fucking run. And the first time that I wore the shoe, uh, the players were were walking up behind me while I'm playing and pop the shoe off. Stepping on the back of your the shoe. The back of the shoe, and the shoe would pop off. Mm. And the coach, Tom Nasalke, I think it was, was coaching Seattle at the time. He was like, you can't play in this shoe. Just dogging it. <laughs> Do dogging it. You got to go through some dog players days. were saying that the shoe, you know what that shoe looked like? It looks like an upside-down Newport cigarette logo. So I was so discouraged by my shoe that I was like, okay. And then this guy that was doing the negotiation, he was like, I was giving him some play, a young bro, you know, who was like, I want to get into the business. And I was like, okay, do this contract, man. No, I, I got to go play. Mm. And so he, I was on the road and, he, and I had the power of attorney. He said, I can't pay my rent. I got all these things. Mm. We need to cash this in. <laughs> we need to cash the stock in so I can pay my rent, so I can live a little bit. This shoe ain't going to never make it. You'll get a contract with Adidas next year. So I said, hey, do what you got to do. Wow. And to this day, when I see Phil Knight, he always look at me like, yeah, they the owner of Nike, because, you yeah, know, we were, we were like, we were young people up in Seattle and Portland. Mm -hmm. So the shoe was not, it wasn't a big shoe across the country. In it that was, area, though. It was just in that area. Because it was all runners, same like Portland and Seattle kind Portland of married each other a little bit. And so he said, well, look, we got Spencer Hayward. That year, I was, uh, I finished third behind, uh, it was Kareem, Nate Archibald, and myself going for MVP of the league. So I finished third with those guys. I think Nate or Kareem won it. And so Phil wanted me to, to like, bring his shoe to the market. I was like, wearing the shoe. It's all good, man. I didn't, I didn't even think about, you know, I didn't even want to charge him anything because he was trying to get the shoe on the market. He was, like, pushing it out of his trunk and, you know, all that stuff. So it wasn't really, like, a big deal, but... Then you got high insight, and you look into the, where it is today, and you say, wow. Are you shocked to see where it is today? No. You knew he had vision from day one? You that knew that he... was vision because of the shoe was like, it was a cool shoe. It was so, suede. Mm. It had, the, you know, a nice feel to it. But I just hate I got talked out of it. And also, at the All-Star Game that year in 1973, I think we played in L.A. here. Mm -hmm and Wilt Chamberlain, Jerry West, and Oscar in the locker room, and these guys looking at me like... They were talking trash. They had the superstars on. Yeah, they, came they out had... the superstars. <laughs> had, had the pro... Had, had, had the, the pro joint, on. had the gold joint on the tongue. Yeah, so Jerry I West said, had his name on his shit. I said, well, I think I'm gonna pull my shoe off and put on a pair of these Adidas. So I played in some Adidas in my All-Star appearance in my, in my Nikes. So Nike was like, piss. Short-sighted. Short-sighted <laughs> like a mom. I know, but... <laughs> no, I get it. Being the first with all of this stuff, you make some tremendous mistakes. Listen, you're R&D for it all, bro. Yeah. You're, I'm sitting here yeah. being able to have the type of career I could, I could have had yeah. or that I had 
because of the R&D that went in. I say the same things to this day. You look at what these kids are making now. These kids are damn near going to be billionaires. Billionaire. Soccer players are billionaires from playing soccer. Right. I never would have thought that, but universally, I see how soccer is revered and I see it, right? Yeah. Basketball, football, baseball, it's on its way. It's on its way. I also see how non-guaranteed contracts are coming out of the... Out of, out of no conversation, you don't really hear about this. You hear about the first two that got, or the first three that got the big number. Yeah. And then the other 12, 13, 14 guys are damn near at a minimum or fighting for a two-year joint, two one year, year joint. Yeah. guaranteed. Like, I'm just, I'm watching it all, Spence. I'm watching, I'm watching how we went through, what, I've been through six lockouts? I've been through six lockouts. Oh, okay, okay. And all those six lockouts have actually got us to where we are today in today's preference of the league and the players association having a better continuity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm God. seeing how they're working yeah, better the together, how it's, how it's flowing better, right?